Hey folks, welcome to this video. I'm really excited about this one because it's about my favorite topic. It's all about consciousness. It's all about reaching our optimal performance as human beings. And look, it's a huge topic. There's not really answers to all of this sort of stuff. This is really my interpretation in terms of where I'm at on my journey so far and my own journey of ascending my consciousness and really expressing myself to my fullest potential. Um, so I'm going to share with you the way that I look at all of this. And, and, you know, a number of people have said that they are interested to hear more about what I mean when I say, you know, raise your consciousness and how to ascend these levels, if you like. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share the way that I look at the world of consciousness currently. It's not a world. It's an energy. All of this is energy. Everything is made of energy. If you want to learn more about that, go and look up quantum physics. I'm not going to try and explain that to you. Not my forte, but I understand it enough to a degree to understand that essentially uh, the entire universe is made up of energy. And so, you know, if you imagine that everything is energy, I've drawn a sort of funnel of energy here, if you like, and, and then there's no funnel in consciousness. Um, but just to kind of diagrammatically show what I mean, if you imagine uh, this funnel of consciousness and here's the human being and we can experience different levels and funnels of consciousness. And I'm going to talk to you about the lowest one first. Um, this is what I call instinct. So this is the human instinct. It's actually very animalistic uh, and it's run by something at the back of your brain. We can call it the hind brain, the primitive brain, the amygdala, um, the mammalian brain. It's a very, very animalistic experience of consciousness. It's, it's, it's a low experience of consciousness, uh, but we do have that within us. And this is all about, uh, you know, the fight or flight response that you may have heard of. If not, you can go and watch my video on understanding stress and we'll talk to you more about what I mean by that. But this is really, if you imagine, you know, we're out there in the wild, maybe not us because we're not there anymore, but uh, if we take some animals, for example, uh, a lion running around in the wild, they need to fight and run away from danger and, and, and basically, you know, chase their prey. And this is the fight or flight response that we all have within us, but it's in all animals as well. And really, what's the point of this? This is defensive. This is really about uh, physical survival, preserving your body, preserving your physical life. Um, and look, there's nothing wrong with this, um, but it is an animalistic experience. But if we move up here, and we'll go into some more of the details about each of these levels in a bit. But if we move up, then we go into what I would call the realm of the human. Uh, and this is where we start looking at the more advanced parts of our brain. So the forebrain, uh, the parts of our brain uh, that are more developed compared to other animals. And this is where we can bring in what we call the intellectual mind. So we have the instinctive mind, the fight or flight, the survival. And here we have the intellectual mind, the ability to rationalize, the ability to think through a little bit. Um, you know, there are various parts of the brain involved in this and various levels of cognition and consciousness. Uh, but we do also have this. And when we get to here, rather than the sort of the fight or flight, which tends to be sort of emotions like anger and anxiety and fear, we're going to experience a broader uh, spectrum, if you like, of emotions, the sort of polarized emotions, the happy, the sad, the good, the bad, the up, the down. Uh, and we, we get a, a broader spectrum, but we still have a fight for survival going on here. But this is about survival of your psychology, your uh, psychological identity, who you think you are, your beliefs. Why do we have so many fights in this world about left wing, right wing, you know, this religion, that religion. Uh, I like this. You don't like that. It's, it's you know, this is all uh, identity politics, if you like. Uh, we may call it that. Um, and it's really a survival of your psychological identity who you think you are what you think you're all about and if someone comes up against that oh you can get a bit of resistance uh so this is very much an intellectual experience but you know can drop down into lower states uh, but also has a potential to go into a higher state so let's have a look at that higher state this is what i call the intuitive state of consciousness so we have the instinct the animal the fight the fight the survive the survival then we have the intellect, which is like, I'm a little bit smarter, I can rationalize, I can think things through, but I'm still really looking at preserving my identity and my survival, not so much of my physical being, but my mental being. And now we come to intuition. I call this God. You don't have to use that word. It's basically uh, all oneness, all consciousness, all time and space. Uh, it's really the energy that I spoke of earlier, which is no bounds. There's no bounds to energy. 
is pure consciousness, it's pure intelligence, it's the source of all creation. And you, my dear souls, have that within you. You have access to that within you. And this is an incredibly powerful, high state of consciousness, high frequency of consciousness. When you're here, connected to your higher state, your soul, your spirit, whatever words you want to use, the universe, you are going to experience transcendental emotions. So down here, we've got the anger, the fight, the fight, and all that sort of anxiety and fear. Here, we're a bit like more happy, sad, a little bit of, you know, other emotions coming in there. Here, we're talking true love, true oneness, true bliss, true joy, true ecstasy. And this is what the people who talk about enlightenment are talking about, how they feel that, you know, I'm not enlightened. I have had experiences of this. Uh, but I have not had a prolonged experience. I don't know how to walk my day in this state yet. I'm getting there hopefully one day. Um, but this is about true growth. This is about expansion. This is not about protection of an identity, whether psychological or physical. It's not about uh, defending your identity, your psychological or physical identity. It is about growth, expansion. There is no identity. It's pure oneness, pure potential, pure energy. You can make yourself a new any time, any day, any space, because there's no boundaries on you. And this we think, we think, I can't vouch for this too much, and this is a very, very new area of, of, of research. I mean, you know, there's so much we don't know about the human experience and consciousness. Um, but essentially, uh, we think that this is linked to what we call the pineal gland, which is a tiny, tiny gland in, in, in your brain, uh, which is sometimes also linked to what I call, or what, not just what I call, what we call the third eye, which is essentially uh, signified around this area of your forehead. And it's really about your psychic abilities and your connection to all time, all space, all wisdom, all knowing. This is the realm of genius. This is the realm of uh, people who create amazing things. This is all about creation. This is creation. This one was sort of more in preservation, you know, preserve what is kind of mode. But here we're creating the new. You don't create the new from down here. Most of us live in these states. Uh, most people, I think actually nowadays, particularly in the modern world, live in a state of instinct and fight and flight. It's your lowest state of consciousness. Uh, many people can then move around in the realm of intellect. But very few people, if I'm honest, are actually up here. But this is where the power is. Um, and it's not about saying, well, I've got to stay in one of these states at any given time. I go down here too, absolutely. But I have the tools that help me raise up. Um, and I teach, you know, the tools to help people raise up in their consciousness. Um, you know, and I've drawn this as a funnel. And really the reason I did that is to explain to you that, as I said, everything is energy. And up here, there's no bounds. And actually, at the moment, I don't know exactly how they came up with this number, the people who research this, but they essentially estimate that up at this level, uh, in, you know, in all pure energy, pure consciousness, there are 400 billion bits of information available to us at any one time. Whether that's information that you, with your limited sensory uh, perception, could sort of understand, like different colours, different lights, different sounds, different taste, different touch, different smell, or the non-physical uh, field of information that essentially uh, some would say already exists. It's, there's a lot more going on than we can see here. And so essentially that, that's 400 billion bits of information that's happening up here. But as you get sucked, your consciousness comes sucked down into this human form, into the mind, it goes down. And we think that at this state, you only perceive about 2000 bits of information. This is done by something called the RADS, the reticular activating system in the stem of your brain. And essentially that's a filter. And what it does is says, whoa, there's loads of information going on. I can't possibly take all that in. Don't necessarily need it for my survival. So I'm gonna filter it out based on what I believe is important, what I am focusing on, my own beliefs, my own current perception. And so it takes all this information and just gives me a few little bits that I think are important for my survival based on what I already believe about myself and the world. So nothing new can happen here. Uh, and then that's what it gives me. So I miss out on all the other potential possibility. And then we get to this level, which I think is even less, because when you're in a state of stress, which is really what this is, like serious stress, uh, you'll notice that you get what we call tunnel vision. So now you're really in the tunnel. All you can look at is your problem, your problem, your problem. You can't even really see any real viable solutions. Not for the modern day problems. Again, if you want to understand more about what you're doing here, what goes on here, check out my video on stress. Um, but it's important to understand here 
This is a survival mode, it's fight, flight, defense. Nothing is gonna be created. Nothing new is going to happen. If you want to change and grow in your life, you will not do it from this state. One caveat, yes, not all stress is bad. I'm not saying don't ever be stressed. You need a little bit of tension to help us grow. But for most people, they live in a chronic state of fear and fight or flight. And therefore, they have no possibility of growth unless they have the tools and the ability and put in the work to raise upwards. So these are essentially, uh, that, that's what the funnel is about. It's really about understanding that, that we come from and we are part of infinite pure potential and consciousness and a field of infinite information. Uh, some may call it the Akashic record, some call it the quantum field. Um, and we, we're very, very certain that, that that is what the universe is made of as far as we know right now. Uh, it's simply energy. And, and as you come down into the human form and as you get more and more, more physically focused, more and more dense, uh, you cut off your possibility, you cut off your levels of awareness and consciousness. And so this is why I also like to use this example of this, is like solid, liquid, gas. Apparently, there's lots of other states as well. Um, from my science classes back in school, I just remember these main ones, but there's someone in between, but not going to worry about that. But it's just another way to exemplify to you what I mean by the different states and levels of consciousness. Um, so this one down here is very solid. Imagine a big concrete block, solid, rigid, heavy, dense, more matter, more physical matter, less energy really anchored down in the present like this physical experience and as you move upwards now we're moving more liquid we're a little bit more flexible we're a little bit more maneuverable but still influenced by the external world the liquid will take the shape of whatever it's poured into so you're still whilst you're a bit more flexible a little bit more open a little bit more adaptable the ability to grow you have a little bit more of an ability to grow um still the point here uh, is that essentially you will take shape of the environment around you. So you're still influenced by it. But here we're gas, gas. Imagine in your mind, gas particles. They are all over the place. They're fast, they're volatile, they're moving around. You can't contain them. They don't take shapes in such a state. I'm, okay, if you could put it in a bottle if you really wanted to, but really if it gets out, and that's what this energy is all about, the all abundant flow, uh, it's, it's gonna go all over the place. Uh, it's very, very powerful, but it's very volatile. And here we have more energy, very high energy state. These transcendental emotions are very high energy states, but we have less physical matter. I think that's where we go when we die, <laughs> into the infinite field of consciousness. Uh, so we don't want to be there all the time because we are human. So we will be here as well. Um, but this is beyond time and space because space is the physical world. This is beyond the physical world. Time is of the physical experience. Uh, but basically, it doesn't exist up there. Have you ever had what we call a state of flow in positive psychology where you're doing something that you love so much, transcendental emotion, love, uh, and essentially what happens is that you, you forget what time it is and you forget to eat because you've, you've lost connection and awareness of your physical space, your body, and you've lost track of time because it doesn't exist up here. You've literally gone to another dimension of consciousness. It's a beautiful, powerful experience. So this is available to us all. And this is a really powerful state. It's good for your mind, your body, your soul, your creativity, your ideas, your genius, your flow, your ability to change, to handle challenges, to really expand into who you're meant to be, what you're capable of being here in this world, rather than the dense, uh, rigid, preservation, survival-based structures down here. We're not meant to survive. We're meant to thrive. And that's something that humans have been given the most amazing tools to be able to do we are, as far as I know, the only species able to consciously choose to develop our own consciousness. I mean, it's insane. Like, I can't even wrap my head around it. But if we take that journey, rather than trying to figure out, you know, what that really means, just take the journey, just play around. When you're in stressed out state, this is what I do in my resilience training, is when you're in stressed out state, how do we raise to this level? And then how do we raise to this level? Some people may, but I not so sure go from there to there um i'm not sure that's possible because it's a huge jump that's to me that's like a sort of quantum leap um but i'm not going to say it's impossible because i don't want to put that kind of rule on it because i don't know that it's not possible um, but i just know that it can be a bit of a challenge so i know from my experience as well if i'm really in a straight state of stress sometimes i just need to work on 
calming this, transmuting this a little bit, then I might open up to higher brain functions, higher brain functions, a uh, bit more of the problem solving, creativity, a bit more openness, a bit more empathy, but all of that starts to come back as we move up. So you don't have that down here. Uh, and then I can go into a state of intuition where I can access so much more wisdom and knowledge and potential possibility. Um, but, you know, again, I don't want to set any rules on that. You may be able to jump. I don't know. Um, so what else is here? Something else to be really uh, aware of is that when you're in an intuitive state and you use that part of your brain and you understand what it means to be connected in that way to all time or space or wisdom or knowledge, you will realize that life happens through you. You're essentially a channel for life, for creation, for expression, for whatever it is that you are here to express. I believe everyone has uh, gifts and talents that are meant to be uh, expressed by them in this world. And so that when you're really here and you get that, you'll really realize that you're a channel for whatever needs to come through in any given moment. You live in a state of flow rather than a, play, a state of force, which is what we do down here. You live in rhythm with the universe, with nature, with energy, rather than living by rules and rigidity, which is what we do down here. So this is really the place of uh, infinite possibility and growth. And you are internally referenced. What does that mean? I'm guided from within. I know my own wisdom. I know my own truth. I know my own knowing. <laughs> Intuition, I call it the thought before the thought. It's what the mind perceives without thinking about it. Very powerful level of awareness. We all have it. You may not know that, but you do. It's very, very powerful. And as we move down, as a human, we can say, well, life doesn't, you may not think life happens through me, but you may say, well, life happens by me. I'm a, I'm a partaker in this existence. I do things, I make things happen. And when you're in a stressed out state, life happens to me. I'm powerless. My whole life is dictated by the circumstances around me. So this is really a, a journey of empowerment as well. When you realize that actually this is very true and very powerful, life happens through you. But look, we are humans and we sort of hang around here. We might go down here, we might move up there. Essentially, um, that this is this is the mass of energy. I, in my view, all of these states exist at all times. Um, it's really about where your awareness is focused to be, you know, to determine which one you're in at any given time. But they all exist. I don't think you actually have to create the state you just have to perceive at that level because really you're the awareness beyond all of this if you really want to get deep about this you know because i am stressed you know i am thinking i am creating whatever i am i am i am i who's i who's thinking i am thinking who is the i that is thinking essentially Let's not go too much into that, probably a step too far for this video, not quite the point of this video, but important to ponder if you're interested in it. Uh, it's essentially, I think, you are the awareness behind all of these states, the one that can perceive at any level and interact at any level. Um, and you really are the, the eye beyond all of it. So, hey, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think. Did this give you anything to think about? Any ideas, any questions? Let me know. Uh, and thank you so much for watching. Give me a subscribe, thumbs up, all that, wherever you see this, do whatever you need to do on those platforms if you want to. Uh, and if you like this video, let me know. And hopefully I will see you again soon. Thanks, take care, bye-bye.